Hello everyone, uh, my name is Karen Plymel and I was asked to share for this podcast Embracing Truth about a truth that I have embraced and that is the idea that we are known by God. And I wanted to share with you about a monument that is in Arlington National Cemetery, it's in the state of Virginia, and it is called the Tomb of the Unknown. It's a monument that memorializes the U.S. service members who have died and um, on the battlefield and whose remains have not been identified. <clears throat> the brave and selfless acts of these heroes are remembered, and though we may not know their names, we are reminded that someone does. On the western panel of the monument, there is a plaque with this statement. It says, here rests in honored glory an American soldier known but to God. While these last four words, known but to God, can bring up emotions of sadness and loss, there is also an amazing comfort in the truth that God knows us. Ultimately, this is all that matters in our lives. God is our audience, the audience of one, and only what he thinks of us, what he calls us, and how he defines us truly matters. In other words, it is enough to be known by God. In Isaiah 43, 1, God reminds us that he knows our name. It says, now this is what the Lord says, the one who created you, Jacob, and the one who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And then in John 10, 3, we read about Jesus. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Can you imagine Jesus calling you by your name? Uh, I, you know, my name is Karen, so I think of him saying, good morning, Karen, or be careful, Karen, or try this option, Karen, or how about, Karen, let's talk, or even, it's going to be okay, Karen. Um, God even has special names for us. These, uh, these are kind of like the, I, I like to think of, of them as like pet names. They're names such as Beloved my people, children of God, friends, brothers, crown of glory, my delight, holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. So again, imagine him saying, good morning, my delight. Hello, my crown of glory. I mean, wow, what a great start to your day to know that this is how God thinks of us. In life, do you ever feel unknown? By this, I mean maybe invisible or unpopular or nameless. I have. Um, when I was in high school, um, <clears throat> I, I was not popular. I had a small group of friends, which is great, but I always envied the kind of popular people. And I remember a time when I was in my ninth grade biology class and we had to form into lab groups. Um, this popular guy called out my name as we were forming groups. And I literally looked behind me for another Karen, because I literally thought he would never be calling me. I didn't even think he knew my name. So he, you know, he teased me saying, hey, you didn't think I know your name, huh? And, you know, even though that was kind of a low key put down, I, I still kind of felt a sense of validation that he even knew my name. So, you know, even though somehow uh, the fact that he knew I existed um, encouraged me as a ninth grader. Um, that being said, we all have a universal need to be known and valued. Thankfully, in the Bible, we have many reminders of our value to God, and who can give more validation to us than God? In Romans 8.31, the Apostle Paul reminds us that if God is for us, who can be against us? Worldly thinking makes us think that if we're popular, we're important. And sometimes we can bring this kind of thinking into our new life as disciples. We can begin to look for worth or validation from people, essentially saying, you know, that God's opinion or knowledge of us isn't enough. So how have I seen this in my life? Well, I've seen it, sadly, in lots of times. Um, for example, when I've looked to be recognized or thanked, when I've wanted my opinion to matter, when my ego has been bruised by someone not appreciating my input or not needing me for some advice or task, when I've not been chosen to be in a certain group 
um, or some sort of position of influence. These are times that I've often resorted to um, feeling sorry for myself or kind of pulling away when I have felt rejected. And um, you know, there have been times that I've even nursed grudges, sadly. Um, you know, sharing it about it now seems so petty, and yet at the time, grudges can get embarrassingly huge in the situations that cause them to. So I, I've had to see these experiences as God teaching me that he is enough for me. Maybe that's why he challenges us to do things like to pray and to do our giving in secret and not for public recognition. I've seen that he loves me so much that he doesn't want to share his throne with anyone else in my heart. He wants to be my full and complete satisfaction. He reassures me that I'm never alone if I am with him, that I'm 100% accepted even if others reject me, and that I'm always treasured and beloved by him even when I might feel forgotten. And that while my works don't save me, he notices them. It's a really cool verse in Hebrews 6, 10 through 12. It says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that when you hope, what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. You know, God sees our good efforts, but there is a reminder here to be diligent and not grow lazy. I especially need this challenge in this present year of 2020, and maybe you do too. While we may be social distancing, we, we, have, can, we can always be closer to God, closer than ever. And he will bring to mind ways that we can still be both active and interactive in our faith. Being known to God is a wonderful shelter and a, a place of refuge um, because his names for us are accurate and unchanging. Ideally, this provides unchanging motivation for us spiritually. I urge you to consider how you can be more motivated to continue your efforts on behalf of God's people, being diligent, faithful, and patient. So going back to the monument in Arlington National Cemetery, and a really cool thing about it is that it is guarded by soldiers 24 hours a day. In fact, it's considered a special honor to be trained and chosen to be one of these guards because it's such a um, hallowed place in this cemetery. And I just want to close with this thought. Is, is there in the sacred and holy place of your heart, in our, in our private thoughts, let's also place a guard that will protect the truth that we are known to God, we matter to God, and that He is our audience of one. Thank you.